Hello students, after the discussion of paper 1, I welcome you to the quick solution discussion of paper 2 for the AIATS of J Advanced 2019 test number 4A. Okay, so let us move forward with question number 41. Question number 41 says that the equations 2x power 4 minus 2x cube plus x square plus 3x minus 6 equals 0 and 4x power 4 minus 2x cube plus 3x minus 9 equals 0 have some common roots. Then we need the product of common roots, sum of all non-common roots, then product of all non-common roots and both the equations have four distinct real roots. So it is not known, so we don't know how many common roots are in these two equations. Ke beech mein, but the basic concept is that when you solve both the equations simultaneously, you will get their common roots. Okay, so let us solve both of them simultaneously. Writing the first equation by multiplying it with 2. So I will get 4x power 4 minus 4x cube plus 2x square plus 6x minus 12 equals 0. This is the first equation multiplied by 2. Second equation 4x power 4 minus 2x cube plus 0x square plus 3x minus 9 equals 0. So let us subtract both of them. Negative, positive, negative, negative, positive. So we will have minus 2x cube plus 2x square plus 3x minus 3 equals 0 which will give me 2x cube minus 2x square minus 3x plus 3 equals 0. Okay, so we can easily factorize this equation. 2x square minus 3 whole multiplied by x minus 1 is what we get equals 0. So either x equal to 1 will be the common root or 2x square minus 3 equal to 0 that will give you x square is equal to 3 by 2. You will get the common roots from here. So you can easily see that x equal to 1 is rejected because it is the roots of none of the equations. So we have two common roots from here. which are given as x equal to plus root 3 by 2 and x equal to minus root 3 by 2. So product of common roots is minus 3 by 2. A is correct. D is definitely wrong because they have two common real roots. Both these roots satisfy both the equations. Okay. Now let us talk about the non-common roots. Fine. Equation number 1. 2x power 4 minus 2x cube plus x square plus 3x minus 6. It can be written as 2x square minus 3 multiplied by x square minus x plus 2. So this will be the factorization. Equation number 2. 4x power 4 minus 2x cube plus 3x minus 9. It again can be written as 2x square minus 3 whole multiplied by 2x square minus x plus 3. So let us have the sum of all non-common roots. So the non-common roots are obtained from these two quadratic equations. The sum of all non-common roots. I'm not concerned whether they are real, whether they are not real. I'm just concerned about their addition. So from the first equation the sum is 1. From the second equation the sum is half. The answer is 3 by 2. Similarly the product of all non-common roots is equal to 2 into 3 by 2 and that is equal to 3. So we have B and C both the options are correct. A, B, C is the final answer. Fine. A very conceptual problem based on common roots. Definitely it is not a quadratic equation but yes the basic concepts always remain the same. Okay. Let us move on to 42. Question number 42 says that if Sn is a series given as 1 plus 1 upon 2 power 4 plus 1 upon 3 power 4 plus 1 upon 4 power 4 so on till 1 upon n power 4 and S infinity is equal to limit n tends to infinity Sn then the correct statements you have to identify. Talking about option number B and option number C you typically have to find out the range of Sn and then in the D part you have to find out the sum of odd terms that means 1 upon 3 power 4 plus 1 upon 5 power 4 that means 1 plus 1 upon 3 power 4 plus 1 upon 5 power 4 and so on. Okay. So students let us start combining the terms of this particular series because as such we don't have any method to tackle 1 upon r raised to power 4. Okay. So we have Sn as 1 plus 1 upon 2 key power 4 
प्लस वन अपॉन थ्री की पार फोर प्लस वन अपॉन फोर रेज टू फोर प्लस वन अपॉन फाइव रेज टू फोर प्लस वन अपॉन सिक्स रेज टू पार फोर प्लस वन अपॉन सेवन रेज टू पार फोर एंड सो ऑन सो दिस इज अ वेरी लॉन्ग सीरीज टिल एन पार फोर स्टूडेंट्स पे अटेंशन वेरी केयरफुली इफ आई कंबाइन दीज टर्म्स From two to four, from four to eight, from eight to sixteen, I'll get two, four, eight, sixteen, and so on, number of terms respectively. And I write that S n is less than one plus. If I increase this term a little bit, I make it one upon two power four plus one upon two power four. That means two upon two power four. I make this as one upon four power four plus one upon four power four plus one upon four power four plus one upon four power four. So four upon four power four. So definitely, this S n will be less than this particular quantity. Okay, plus eight upon eight power four, and so on. And let us take the terms till infinity, because if I take the terms infinity, definitely S n will be less than this particular value. And over here, I'll also apply limit n tends to infinity, because I have taken infinite terms on the right hand side as well. So ultimately, I can see that S infinity comes out to be less than one plus. This is one upon two power three. This is one upon two power six. This is one upon two power nine, and so on. So it is an infinite GP with first term as one, common ratio as one by eight. So S infinity is less than a upon one minus r. That means S infinity is less than eight upon seven. This is the first way to tackle this particular series. Okay, so s infinity is less than eight by seven. So let us try to find out the lower limit of s infinity also. So s n I will again write one plus one upon two ki par four plus one upon three ki par four plus one upon four ki par four five par four six par four seven par four eight par four up to n power four. Now, students, what I am going to do, I am going to take the terms as this, up till four, up till eight, up till sixteen, and now I am going to decrease their value. So one upon three power four, one upon four power four plus one upon four power four. That means two upon four power four. This sum is definitely greater than four upon eight power four. That means one upon eight power four plus one upon eight power four plus one upon eight power four plus one upon eight power four. So taking the first two terms as same. Plus again, I am taking till infinity, and then on this side, I am going to apply the limit n tends to infinity, yes, n. And this particular value is greater than this value because I have decreased the terms. Okay, so s infinity is greater than one plus. Taking out one by two common, I will have one by two cube plus one by two power six plus one by two power nine, and so on. So again, the same series. The first term. Of the square bracket is one by eight. Common ratio is one by eight. So the sum is one plus one by two into one by seven. E upon one minus r will be one by seven. So s infinity is greater than fifteen by fourteen. Is the final result. So ultimately, I have fifteen by fourteen less than s infinity less than eight by seven, which gives you the approximate values as one point zero seven. Less than s of infinity, less than one point one four. This is the conclusion that will answer your options. Okay, so let us have a look at the options. Wrong, obviously. It can never be greater than two, even if we take infinite terms. Exactly same values: fifteen by fourteen, eight by seven. Twenty-two by twenty-one is a value definitely less than fifteen by fourteen, and seventeen by fourteen is definitely a value greater than eight by seven. So this is also correct. Talking about d part, if s infinity is k, then One plus one upon three power four plus one upon five power four plus one upon seven power four so on till infinity. That means only the odd terms are being considered is equal to fifteen by sixteen k. So let us figure it out. S infinity is k. Let us say so. We have one plus one by two ki power four, one by three ki power four, one by four ki power four, one by five ki power four, six ki power four, and so on is equal to k. Let us take the odd terms separate. Three power four, five power four, seven power four, plus one upon two power four, plus one upon four power four, plus one upon six power four, 
and again till infinity is equal to k. Students, taking out 1 upon 2 power 4 from the second bracket common. So I'll have the sum of odd terms 1 upon 5 power 4 plus 1 upon 7 power 4 up to infinity plus 1 by 2 power 4 that is 1 by 16. This will be 1 upon 1 power 4 plus 1 upon 2 power 4 plus 1 upon 3 power 4 that is again equal to k is equal to k. So we have the sum of odd terms up to infinity is equal to 15k by 16. So option number D is definitely true. Okay. So final answer of the question, a very long one, no doubt, B, C, D. Okay. Let us move on to question number 43. Question number 43 says that let S1 be a circle x square plus y square plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. S2 be another circle x square plus y square minus 4x equals 0. The locus of the center of a variable circle which touches both S1 and S2 externally is S equals 0. Then what is the eccentricity of S? The distance between the foci of the conic is required. The minimum distance between S1 and S2 is required. Students, S1, the modified equation x plus 3 whole square plus y square equals 1 center minus 3 comma 0 radius 1 unit c1 r1 s2 modified equation x minus 2 whole square plus y square equals 4 center 2 comma 0 r2 equals 2 c1 c2 equals 5 r1 plus r2 equals 3. The circles have no point of contact in common. They are lying outside each other. The minimum distance is C1, C2 minus R1 minus R2. So it is 2. Option number C is correct. Now let us talk about the locus of the center of the circle which touches both of them externally. So let the center be C. So condition for external touching with circle 1, C, C1 is equal to R plus R1. Let the center of the circle be C, H, K, radius be R. So C C1 will be root under H plus 3 whole square plus K square is equal to R plus 1. For circle 2, C C2 is equal to R plus R2. Similar manner, root of H minus 2 whole square plus K square equals R plus 2. Students, it is very clear from equation number 1 and equation number 2. If you subtract both of them, you will get a standard locus of hyperbola because difference of the distance of a moving point from two fixed points will be equal to 1. That is the constant value. Okay. So we will have so under root of h minus 2 whole square plus k square minus under root of h plus 3 whole square plus k square equals 1. So this is ps1 minus ps2 equals 1. So replacing h by x and k by y x minus 2 whole square plus y square minus under root of x plus 3 whole square plus y square equals 1. We have the foci s1 as 2 comma 0, s2 as minus 3 comma 0, 2a value. The constant difference of distances is equal to 1. This is the hyperbola 2ae. Distance between two foci is equal to 5. If 2a is 1, eccentricity comes out to be equal to 5. Definitely, again, confirming that it is a hyperbola. Very simple one. A is wrong, B is wrong, C is correct, D is correct. Distance between foci of conic is 5 units, 2AE is the value. So we have answer as option number C and option number D. Fine. Let us move on to 44. Question number 44 based on limits. It says that the value of the limit n tends to infinity. n multiplied by cube root of n cube plus 3n square plus 4n plus 2 plus square root of n square minus 2n plus 4 minus 2n is equal to p by q where p and q are natural numbers co prime to each other then students it is very clear that we will not be able to solve this question by rationalization anyhow so the only approach that is left is the binomial theorem for n index we will have to apply the approximation that 1 plus x raised to power n is approximately equal to 1 plus nx plus n into n minus 1 by 2 into x square and so on so let us start it we have limit n tends to infinity n into inside the brackets let us take n common 1 plus 3 by n plus 4 by n square plus 2 by n cube whole cube root plus n again common square root of 1 minus 2 by n 
plus 4 by n square minus n into 2. So n will be taken out common again and I will replace n as 1 by h. So limit h tends to 0. 1 upon h square as we have n square outside now. 1 plus 3h plus 4h square plus 2h cube whole raised to the power 1 by 3 plus 1 minus 2h plus 4h square raised to the power 1 by 2 minus 2. So 1 plus let this be treated as x raised to the power n again over here x raised to the power a different value of n and a different value of x. So the next step will be obtained by the binomial approximation that stands as limit h tends to 0 1 plus 3h by 3 plus 4h square by 3 plus 2h cube by 3 1 plus nx plus 1 by 3 into 1 by 3 minus 1 minus 2 by 3 divided by 2 factorial multiplied by x raised to the power 2. So 3h plus 4h square plus 2h cube raised to the power 2. Why are we doing till 2? Because I have h square in the denominator. So at least I need to get the terms of constant term h and h square from the numerator. Okay. Plus 1 by h square is there outside. 1 minus 2h by 2 plus 4h square by 2 1 plus nx plus 1 by 2 into minus 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 factorial minus 1 by 8 into minus 2h plus 4h square whole square minus 2. Students carefully observe the terms 1 plus 1 minus 2. Constant term is gone. Talking about h raised to the power 1 so 1h and minus 1h. All the terms which I was afraid of constant term and the coefficient of h are 0. Now I need to gather the coefficient of h square from the numerator that's it okay. So we have the coefficient of h square as 4 by 3 from the first term plus from this term I'll have minus 1 by 9 into 9 h square so minus 1 plus from this term I have 2 and from this term I'll have minus 1 by 8 into 4 h square so minus 1 by 2. That's all divided by h square the terms will be cancelled h cube h power 4 h power 5 all the all those terms will go 0 directly okay. So this is the answer we have 1 by 2 plus 4 by 3 so 11 by 6 p is 11 q is 6 modulus of p minus q is 5 correct p into q is 66 correct p plus q is 20 wrong this is also wrong. So the final answer will be ac okay. Let us move on to question number 45. Question number 45 says that if x belongs to the interval 0 to pi by 4 and y equals under root of sec x plus tan x plus under root of sec x plus tan x plus under root of sec x plus tan x so on till up to infinity then dy by dx can be equal to so students we know that in such terms when we have repetition of expression up to infinity we take one term outside and we again let the same term as y so y is equal to under root of secant x plus tan x plus y that's it so we have y square minus y equals to secant x plus tan x so 2y y dash by differentiation minus y dash is equal to secant x tan x plus secant square x so y dash into 2y minus 1 equals Secant x is common, secant x plus tan x that is y square minus y, y square minus y. So definitely y dash has one possible value, y square minus y into secant x upon 2y minus 1. This is the one of the possible values, which definitely gives you option number A as correct. But further we have to explore the options. From here I can say that secant x minus tan x which is the reciprocal of secant x plus tan x is 1 upon y square minus y. From this point and from this point I can conclude that option number d is also correct because 1 upon secant x minus tan x can be written as y square minus y in the numerator. Okay, So we have option number d also correct. 
Now let us explore about C and B. So we have secant x plus tan x as y square minus y secant x minus tan x as 1 upon y square minus y. So we have 2 secant x on addition is equal to y square minus y whole square plus 1 upon y square minus y. So that will give you y power 4 minus 2y cube plus y square plus 1 upon y square minus y. That is the value of 2 secant x. Okay. So you just have to replace this value. So from here we can see that if we substitute the value of secant x in the original answer, if we substitute secant x over here, we'll get option number b as correct also because it is y power 4 minus 2y cube plus y square. So y power 4 minus 2y cube plus y square, here it is the reverse way. Okay. So final answer is option number a, option number b and option number d, a, b, d. Okay. Let us move on to 46. Okay. So next up we have question number 46 which says that let n be a positive integer and 1 plus x square raised to power 2 into 1 plus x raised to power n is equal to sigma k from 0 to n plus 4 a k into x raised to power k. If a1, a2 and a3 are in arithmetic progression then the possible values of n is or are. So students will have to expand this particular expansion up to at least a1, a2, a3 so that we can apply the condition of ap. Okay. So we have 1 plus x square whole square into 1 plus x raised to the power n is equal to a0 x power 0, a1 x power 1, a2 x power 2, a3 x cube and so on. Now we have 1 plus 2x square plus x power 4 into nc0 plus nc1x plus nc2x square plus nc3x cube and so on equal to the same thing a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus a3x cube and so on. The condition of AP is 2 times the middle term is equal to first term plus last term. So students what is a2? a2 is the coefficient of x square. x square can be obtained by multiplying this with this or this with this. So this is 2 plus nc2. So this is coefficient of x square. a1 is the coefficient of x from here and here. This is the only possibility. So a1 is simply nc1. And let us talk about a3. a3 is the coefficient of x cube. So this into 1 that is nc3 plus nc1 into x square that is 2 into nc1. So this is a3 now. That is all we have to solve. So let us go for it. 4 plus nc2 is n into n minus 1 by 2. So 2 into nc2 is n into n minus 1 is equal to 3 into nc1 that is n plus nc3. So n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 divided by 6. So from here we will get n cube minus 9 n square plus 26 n minus 24 equals 0 which will give you n minus 2 into n minus 3 into n minus 4 equals 0. Okay. So n the possible values are 2, 3, 4. We have option number A, B, C as the correct choices. Okay. So A, B, C gives us the final answer. Let us move on to 47. Question number 47 says that there are two circles S1 equals 0 and S2 equals 0 both touching the parabola 75 y square equal to 64 into 5x minus 3 at a given point 6 by 5 comma 8 by 5 and x is as well. If the radius of the circle s1 is equal to 0 is smaller than of s2 is equal to 0 then we have to find out the information about s1 and s2. Okay. So let us have the coordinate axis first of all. This is a rightward opening parabola having vertex at 3 by 5 comma 0. So this is the parabola. Now there are two circles touching this parabola at a particular point as well as the x axis. So let us have the first circle something like this. Obviously the second circle will be a bigger circle lying something like this. Okay. So we know the vertex of this particular parabola. This point is known to us. Let this vertex be V. Let this point be P. This point is given 6 by 5 comma 8 by 5. Here we can easily see that 
these two circles can be written as a family of curves where one curve is the point circle at B and second curve is the tangent of parabola at this particular point that can be obtained by the writing the equation t equal to 0 at this point P. Okay, so writing t equal to 0 at point P, I have 75 into y y1 that is y into 8 by 5 is equal to 64 into 5 times x plus x1 by 2 x plus 6 by 5 divided by 2 minus 64 into 3. From here you will get 4x minus 3y equals 0. So this is the line passing through origin. Okay, y equal to 4x by 3. So we have the line t and we have this s as point circle at the point p. So we can write down the equation of two green circles as s plus lambda t equals 0. So let us write s plus lambda t is equal to 0. p point is 6 by 5 comma 8 by 5. t is 4x minus 3y equals 0. So point circle will be x minus 6 by 5 whole square plus y minus 8 by 5 whole square plus lambda times 4x minus 3y equals 0. Now these are the equation of circles. We have the x intercept of the circle as 0 because this is touching the x axis. So g square minus c is equal to 0. g square equals c. What is g? g is half of the coefficient of x then the negative and c is the constant term. From here you get g square equals c. g will be 6 by 5 minus 2 lambda whole square equal to c will be 6 by 5 whole square plus 8 by 5 whole square so that will be 4 simply so 2 lambda minus 6 by 5 equals 2 from here we'll get two values of lambda so we have 2 lambda minus 6 by 5 equals to 2 or 2 lambda minus 6 by 5 equals minus 2 from here we'll get 16 by 5 so lambda is 8 by 5 from here you will get 4 by 5 so lambda will be minus 2 by 5. From here you will get both the circles as x square plus y square minus 4x minus 2y plus 4 equals 0. This is the first circle. Center 1 is 2 comma 1 and the radius is the smaller one. So r1 is equal to 1. The second circle is x square plus y square plus 4x minus 8 by plus 4 equals 0. The bigger one center is minus 2 comma 4 lying in the second quadrant obviously. Radius is equal to 4 units. So let us answer the options now. Equation of S2 is x square plus y square plus 4x minus 8y plus 4 equals 0. Correct. B is also correct. Distance between the centers of S1 and S2. C1, C2 the distance is definitely equal to 5. C option also correct. Sum of both the radius is equal to 6. Wrong. ABC is the final answer. Okay. Let us move on to question number 48. Question number 48 says that a unique circle passes through the points of intersection of the curves x square minus y square equals a square and y equal to x square where a belongs to r then. So we have to find out the range of a center and the radius of circle. Let us target two basic concepts. x square minus y square equals a square is a rectangular hyperbola. y equal to x square is a parabola opening upwards. So the first condition is that it should be the point of intersection of these two. That means when you solve x square minus y square equal to a square and y equal to x square हमारे पास real point of intersection होने चाहिए यानि कि x square minus x power 4 equal to a square जो equation है उसमें हमारा जो discriminant है that should be positive okay this is plus a square so we have discriminant to be positive and that will give you 1 minus 4 a square should be positive so mod a less than half first thing second thing if we write down the equation of the family of curves intersecting these two curves, that should satisfy the conditions of equation of a circle. That means writing s1 plus lambda s2 is equal to 0. So we have x square minus y square minus a square plus lambda times y minus x square equals 0. Clearly coefficient of x square should be equal to coefficient of y square. So that means 1 minus lambda is equal to minus 1. Lambda is equal to 2. So for lambda is equal to 2, we have the equation minus x square minus y square plus 2y minus a square equals 0. Or in other words, x square plus y square 
minus 2y plus a square equals 0. The center is fixed, 0, 1. Radius is variable under root of 1 minus a square. Fine. So if radius is 1 minus a square, obviously 1 minus a square has to be greater than or equal to 0. Mod a less than or equal to 1. For 1, it is a point circle. So center of the circle 0, 1. Very true. Range of a. Intersection of both the conditions minus half to half. Correct. Maximum possible value of radius of circle is 1. Definitely true. If a is 0, radius will be 1. True. Range of a is minus 1 to 1. Wrong. So we have a, b, c again as the correct options for question number 48. Okay. Let us move on to 49. Question number 49 says that fx is equal to sin x plus sin of pi by 4 into under root of 1 minus cos 2x whole square plus sin square 2x where x belongs to 0 to 6 pi. Then we need the number of solutions and the sum of solutions of fx equal to 0, fx equal to 2 and of fx equal to 0 and fx equal to 2. So let us first of all simplify this particular expression. We know that the second part is we have to open the whole square. So it will be sin of pi by 4 into under root a square plus b square minus 2ab. 1 plus cos square 2x plus sin square 2x. So plus 1 minus 2 cos 2x. Again it is a perfect square. All of us know that sin x plus sin of pi by 4 root under 2 times 1 minus cos 2x. So 4 times sin square x. So, so that will give you sin x plus sin of pi by 2 because 2 mod sin x will be the answer so pi by 2 into mod sin x this is the simplest form of fx now let us analyze for fx equal 0 and fx equal 2 fx equals 0 obviously when sin x is 0 all the points lying in this particular interval will be pi 2 pi 3 pi 4 pi 5 pi because 0 and 6 pi are open okay further students when the first sin x is 1 and the second sin x is minus 1 that also give me fx equals 0 second sin expression will be minus 1 so that will happen at 3 pi by 2 2 pi plus 3 pi by 2 so that is 7 pi by 2 4 pi plus 3 pi by 2 so that is 11 pi by 2 number of solutions of fx equal to 0 is 8 this is true Sum of all the solutions for fx equal to 0 will be 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 will be 15 pi plus 21 pi by 2. So 15 pi plus 21 pi by 2 gives you 51 pi by 2. D is also correct. Talking about c part, fx equal to 2. First term has to be 1, second term has to be 1. x equals pi by 2. x equal to 2 pi plus pi by 2. And x is equal to 4 pi plus pi by 2. Only one possibility. So 9 pi by 2. Three solutions, correct. Sum of solutions, 9 plus 5, 14 plus 1, 15 pi by 2. Wrong. Final answer will be ACD for question number 49. Okay. Let us move on to 50. Okay, students. Question number 50 based on solutions of triangle. It says that in a triangle ABC, if A is 5, B is 4, cause of A minus B is 31 by 32, then which of the following are correct about the triangle ABC? So this one gives you the use of cause of A minus B ki jo value di hai, wahan se hum tangent rule laga sakte hain yani ki main tan of a minus b by 2 ki value nikal sakta hu kyunki mere paas a aur b ki value pata hai from there i'll get the value of angle c and everything else can be calculated so hamare paas ek relation hota hai that is tan square a minus b by 2 ye hota hai 1 minus cos of a plus b a minus b upon 1 plus cos of a minus b So 1 minus 31 by 32 upon 1 plus 31 by 32, 1 upon 63. So tan of a minus b by 2 jo hota hai by tangent rule, uski value aati hai a minus b upon a plus b cot c by 2. Tan of a minus b by 2 ki value 1 by root 63. So that is 1 by 3 root 7. a minus b upon a plus b, 5 minus 4 upon 5 plus 4, 1 by 9. Cot c by 2 ki jo value aagai hai paas. वो आएगी 3 by root 7. So if cot c by 2 is 3 by root 7, I can say that tan of c by 2 is equal to root 7 by 3. And cos c is 1 minus tan square c by 2. 
upon 1 plus tan square c by 2. So this will be 2 upon 16 1 by 8. Cos c comes out to be equal to 1 by 8. Now you know a, you know b, you know small c also. Okay. So a square plus b square minus c square upon 2ab that is cos c. It has come out to be equal to 1 by 8. From here you will get c is equal to 6. a is already 5. b is 4. Now you can calculate every single information about the question. In radius, semi perimeter, circum radius, cos c. So d option is already correct. Let us calculate s. s will be 15 by 2. Let us calculate delta 1 by 2 ab sin c. From there you will get a into b is 20 by 2 is 10. Sin c will be root 63 by 8. That will be 15 root 7 upon 4. So now I have in radius and circum radius left. R equals delta by s. So 15 root 7 by 4 upon 15 by 2. So it is root 7 divided by 2. Capital R, ABC by 4 delta. ABC will be 6 into 5, 13 into 4, 120 divided by 15 root 7. That will be 8 by root 7. Root 7 by 2, 8 by root 7. So in radius, root 7 by 2 correct. Semi perimeter is 15 by 2 units correct. Circum radius is given to be wrong in C option. So final answer rests as ABD for question number 50. Okay. Let us move on to the next section which contains the paragraph type problems now. 